Hello, and welcome to another episode in our series on getting started with the Python client library for the Google Ads API. I'm Ben Carl, and as you know, if you've watched the other videos in this series, I'm a developer relations engineer on the API and the lead maintainer of the Python client library. In this episode, we'll create a new Python project and install the Google Ads client library into it as a dependency. Okay, and with that, let's get started. I'll set everything up directly here in my terminal and we'll use Vim to edit files as needed. You can use any IDE of your choice, such as VS Code or PyCharm. To start, I'm simply going to make a new directory to contain this project called Getting Started Python. And we'll change into that directory with the cd command. In the project directory, the first thing I like to do is to initialize git. As you can see, by running the git status command, this directory is not currently tracked by git, which is good. You don't want to initialize git in a repository that's already tracked. To initialize git, I'll run git init. If we run git status, we can see that this project is now tracked. Next, it's good to confirm which version of Python is installed by executing Python with the version flag. I see here that I have Python 3.8.15 installed, which does meet the requirements for the Python client library. Now let's create a virtual environment to easily encapsulate the Python version and installed dependencies. This will also prevent us from modifying the default Python environment in our machine. To do that, I'll run Python dash M V E N V getting started env, where venv is the module that creates virtual environments and getting started env is the name of the virtual environment. You can name your virtual environment anything you want. This may take a moment. I can see by running the ls command that the new directory was created with this name. Now I do not want git to track this folder, so I'm going to create a git ignore file and add the directory name to it. Another option would be to create the virtual environment elsewhere on your machine. Now if I run git status, I can see that that directory is no longer tracked. Next, let's activate the virtual environment by passing the virtual environment's activate binary to the source command. You can see the name of the virtual environment in parentheses on the left-hand side of my prompt, and that's how I know that I've activated it. Now that we have the very basic foundation for our application, let's create a basic Python script that simply prints, hello world, If we run this new file, we'll see hello world printed the standard output. Now let's install the Python client library into this environment by invoking pip. I'll run python m pip install google adds, which is the name of this package. This may take a few minutes to complete. Now the Python client, li client library package is installed in our virtual environment. But if we want to make this dependency a part of our application, let's save all of our current dependencies to a requirements.txt file with the following command. Python dash m pip freeze. And then we will pass the results of that command into a requirements.txt file. There are many ways to declare and manage application dependencies but I've chosen to use a requirements.txt file for the purposes of this video because it's fast and lightweight. If we read the contents of that file, we'll see everything that was installed along with the Google Ads package. For our last step, let's import the Python client library into our Python script and try to run it. At the top of the file, I will type from Google dot ads dot google ads dot client import google ads client 
the Google Ads client class is the main class that we'll use to, to interact with the client library. Close this up. Let's run this file again. I see no import errors, which means that the project is now set up. Before we move on, let's check our git status and commit our changes. I'll, read, I'll do git add on everything and git commit. First commit. In the next episode, we'll configure the credentials we obtained in the previous videos so that we can authenticate and make requests to the API. See you there.